The United States authorities should offer retired F-16 pilots to help Ukraine in the war against Russia, stated U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham during a visit to Kiev. Following talks with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky, Graham said that retired F-16 pilots who want to fight for freedom could be hired by Ukraine. Ukrainians are going to look throughout NATO nations for willing fighter pilots who are retired to come to help them until they can get their pilots trained, he said. According to Graham, this way Ukraine will be able to use the F-16s transferred from the Allies earlier while its pilots are undergoing training. So my message is we need to be all in. Here's what I want to see happen in 2024, calendar year 2024. I'm going to bring this up. I'm asking President Biden before you leave office, make sure this invitation gets issued, Graham noted. Ukraine has already begun receiving its first F-16 fighters from the Allies. According to Western media, they have even been used to protect Ukrainian skies. However, according to David Arakamia, leader of the Servant of the People faction in the Vakovna Rada, the partners have promised Ukraine more F-16s than they can train pilots and maintenance personnel. American intelligence and counter-terrorism expert Malcolm Nance told Ukraine Form that he believes the Ukrainian Armed Forces F-16 aircraft would change the situation on the front lines. While commenting on Western media reports suggesting that the aircraft would not impact the war's course, he noted, they have said the same thing about every weapon system provided to Ukraine, including the HIMARS high-mobility artillery rocket systems. HIMARS changed the game, turning the tide on the battlefield, he said, adding, then ATA CMS missiles, which were long withheld, became the next superweapon. He explained that certain weapons do not win wars on their own. Instead, they create a system of means to suppress the enemy effectively. According to Nance, the F-16s will give Ukraine new capabilities for defending against air threats from the Russian army. A fighter jet is equipped with Amram missiles. Now the range to the target will be 100 kilometers. Russian planes will explode along with cruise missiles in Russian airspace, the expert explained. He noted that when integrated into Ukraine's air defense system, F-16s will be able to intercept Russian Kinzhal missiles and pursue bombers and fighters with the help of Amram. On the front line in Ukraine, Russian troops enjoy little air support because their fighter jets are so vulnerable to Ukrainian air defenses. NATO hopes that the F-16s will force Russian pilots further back, far enough that they can no longer terrorize Ukrainian civilians with the massive glide bombs they drop while flying within Russian airspace. Russian drones needed for target identification and artillery guidance, as well as FPV, were unable to function. The rapid Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region took Russia and Western analysts by surprise. In a few days, Ukrainian troops captured more territory than the Russians had in several months. The success appears to have been achieved by mastering a new style of warfare, writes Forbes. The Ukrainian armed forces have reportedly disabled Russia's network of aircraft type reconnaissance drones, effectively blinding the command. This may have been done with the help of new FPV interceptors linked to air defense radars. Secondly, during the temporary shutdown of surveillance, short-range jammers were deployed to the front line. They were programmed based on data previously received from electronic warfare intelligence. They learned the main frequencies of our border radio networks, drone control frequencies, and prepared powerful jammers that suppressed our communications, writes a Russian blogger quoted by War Translated. This was possible because the area was considered low priority and was not equipped with the latest equipment. In Ukraine, the drone war against jammers has become a constant arms race, with new jammers appearing for every step taken to evade jamming frequencies. It appears that the drones in this sector were not up to modern standards. As a result, Russian drones, needed to target identification and artillery guidance as well as FPV, were unable to function. Even the dangerous Lancet loitering munitions were partially affected. Drones are the primary means of stopping armored attacks. Recent data suggests they account for two-thirds or more of tank destruction, and video footage shows entire armored assault forces being knocked out one by one by successive FPV strikes long before they reach enemy positions. By concentrating sufficient jamming capabilities in the Kursk sector, Ukraine neutralized Russian drones, allowing its armored vehicles to cross open territory without being destroyed. But how did they cope with Russian troops dug in behind defensive lines that had been built for two years? Analysts ask. 
Ukraine has filled the skies with its own drones, a constant barrage of precision-guided UAVs flying in swarms. OSINT analyst Roy notes that in recent weeks, Ukraine has used powerful drone bombs to punch holes in the top cover of Russian trenches and dugouts. Experienced FPV pilots can fly through these holes and clear the trench below. Perhaps significantly, some of the footage shows Ukraine's new dive bomber drones.